Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. My name is Keith. Doug, how are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. What episode is this? This is, you just said it. 41, I believe. 41, see? Yeah. I need more coffee. (laughs) Episode 41. Uh, So we had a really nice hiatus uh, break from uh, the show, in which we had Thanksgiving. I guess, assume everything went okay for you guys. Yeah, good. You know, always uh, eat too much. Uh, Lots of pumpkin pie, lots of green bean casserole. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff, man. That's tasty. I, I know what you mean about the yeah. eating. It's like this time of year is it's it's good for that. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, always have to uh, kind of get back in being disciplined at the New Year's. It always seems like so. But yeah, and in that mode, uh, our focus heading into the holidays is we're going to talk about you know Christmas stuff specifically. We'll talk about Christmas movies. Uh, it's that good time of year to kind of settle in and start watching some of those. And let's we're going to get our our geeky nerdy view of what we would watch and what we're into. Some of them are might be kind of surprising. So, but before we do all that cool stuff, we have a lot of news to make up for. So let's queue up the nerd news. Nerd news. And maybe this is because we took a break, but when I went out there and looked, Doug, I was like, holy cow, a lot of stuff. is Yeah. Been last two on. weeks, a uh, lot of stuff going on. Definitely. So I'm getting the share up here, and there we go. And let me know. There we go. All right, I'm gonna let you uh, let you yeah. take this one. So the first one that uh, caught my eye was uh, Popular Science. It's a magazine. It's been running for over 151 years. It is coming to an end, uh, as in the paper or in your hands edition. They are switching mm-hmm. to an all digital format digital. now, mm-hmm. and. Uh, well, sorry, uh, back that up. They switched to an all digital format a couple of years ago, and now that's even gone. So, 150, 151 year run. Uh, wow. Great. So, is it, wait a minute, like, clarification. Is the magazine itself like completely dead, or is it only going to be existing digital form now? Well, I believe they've killed the uh, digital form too. Oh. It started in 1872. The whole thing uh, is gone now. This is like I this believe so. Reading the post, yeah. Wow, this would be like the National Geographic, you know, oh, yeah. completely just dying. That blows my mind. Yeah, I hadn't, I didn't know this was coming. I Popular Science, such a great magazine. Honestly, I didn't. I knew it had been around forever. I had no clue it was 151 years. That's insane. Yeah. Wow. So it looks like reading the article, they're going to change their name to Pop Sci, P O P S C I. Mm-hmm. Got to stay cool, with um, kids. And they're gonna just do some articles <laughs> online. Um, but no magazine, no like official deep content. This makes me sad. Why do we start with such a sad piece of news, man? Oh, well, I had to get it out of the way. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Well, you're bumming me out. No, you know, they killed DVDs this year and now they're killing popular <laughs> science. I can't believe this. I bet it'd be so cool to go back to those 1920 issues and see what. Oh, and see what the technology yeah. rave was about. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. End of an era. Okay. Well, I I don't know if you can scroll down just a little bit to show. um, Yeah, right there. So kind of click through those, some of the Mm -hmm. earlier catalogs or the magazines. Yeah. Yeah. And just all the technology. It's crazy. Ham radio. Talks about airplanes Mm. when flight was first. Oh, geez, Louise. So, so bummy. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) So we'll move on to happier times. I was going to say, the next one better be good. (laughs) All right. Oh, man, more well, depression. <laughs> this is a bummer, too. So, you know. What are you doing to year, me, Doug? <laughs> it's end of the year, time to clean things up, try, time to throw trash away, and that means your old uh, <laughs> Gmail account. Uh, Google wow. has announced for months and months and months, I've got several emails, uh, <laughs> that if your Google account is dormant, it's going bye-bye. Yeah. And I'm sure, and you coming from the IT world, this is going to massively help their servers maybe or oh, yeah. help uh, uh, some domain lists, if I'm using the right word. So. No, you're spot on. It's, it's server um, resources. It's expensive to host all this kind of stuff. And it's while they have ads inside of Gmail, it's free. So you get it. You know, you got a clean house. It's a good business yeah. decision. I know I have used... Gmail for setting up so many things, whether it's a throwaway account for, you know, I I know for a while there, I had done it for like the kids that had Xbox um, uh, guest accounts and I made guest accounts for each one. I think I used Gmail instead of Outlook (laughs) and 
if they're not used, they're going to get blown away. So it's interesting what this could impact because I even know in my work career, there were situations where there were these smart printers, you know, like they can, they can fax, they can oh, do yeah. Xerox copies, like all that kind of stuff. Well, oftentimes in order to just get it to be able to be print, like to be able to print to them, uh, you had to have a, a public email address associated with them. So you would just go out and part of the practice was create a Gmail account, use that. So I wonder if this will impact like small businesses or businesses that kind of did that kind of stuff too. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, one of the things says to reduce the risk of your account getting deleted, you would have used it within the last two years. So you'd have to. So email. if you haven't logged in since 2021, Google said uh, you're probably going to have your account deleted. Yeah, this, the real kick in the face is I know you can use your Gmail for Apple ID, and again, a lot of companies I work for their Apple IDs were tied to, the, to a Gmail that just a throwaway Gmail, but you didn't email with it. You didn't log into it. So I think this could be yep. far reaching, not just for people on personal level, but even businesses. So it's going to be interesting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I see what they do with it. They got to. So gotta one of the things that, that kind of worried me just coming from the world of Xbox and PlayStation with usernames mm -hmm. is Google said, if they delete an act an inactive account, that uh, Gmail address cannot be used again to create a new account. Oh, so it's not like you. So can that do being a said, if you recovery. want something cool like uh, I can't even think of a name, but Super Soldier Twenty One, just yeah. something made up. So if that's already been deleted, you my understanding get, is no one else can even get it. it. Wow, yeah. that's a, wow. And what's funny is like I remember so many people have Gmail because it was the cool thing to go to. You remember oh, it yeah. was Yahoo. It was uh, uh, Hotmail. Hotmail. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can always tell when somebody gives you their Hotmail. You're like, oh, my God, really? You're that well, old. It's going to be that way with so Gmail. 90s. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But a lot of people still have those accounts. And But yeah. I remember I moved from Hotmail or whatever, I had, you know, over to Gmail because it was cool at the time. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, back in the day, and uh, some of our younger audience won't understand, but uh, Yahoo Messenger was the stuff aol messenger msn messenger msn that yeah. was the place to be back in the day yeah different times it's like the old oh, west yeah. <laughs> strike a lighter oh <laughs> uh, all right let's see our next one here i gotta get these ads out of the way all yeah, right as I'm you're gonna, doing that i'll kind of talk yeah uh, I think we're about a week or two late. I think it's already been taken care of. Okay. But for the last couple of weeks, I've seen nothing but Apple's name drop feature. And I've seen it in the news on TV, local news. I've seen it in uh, like police social media posts. Uh, even our local police department shared it. Uh, it is uh, Apple's name drop feature. Uh, people are worried that if you get close to another phone, all your contacts can go to that to on the phone wirelessly yeah it's meant to be easy for you to share your contact information but the idea is that if i just come in proximity to you it may send it right but i think they they put guardrails on this now so this shouldn't be an I, issue I, and i think uh when everybody was sharing it some kind of more uh connected ios people said this isn't a real thing you all are worrying about stuff that you shouldn't worry about yeah i think you i have think to get the phones to actually touch and stuff like that yeah. too yeah. Well, and I think the way I read it is uh, airdrop, uh, you can send stuff, but this, you would have to send the confirmation on each phone. Yeah. Like, you both have to agree. Sending it. Yeah. yeah. You both have to be in agreement. So it looks, it sounds like they already had some safeguards in there, but sometimes these things are kind of clickbaity too. You know, they're trying to get people just worried. Oh, yeah. But you do get the risk. I mean, you don't, especially with a lot of teenagers with phones and things like that, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of weirdos out there. So you do have to stay safe. So I'm glad they got it fixed, though. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Oh, all right, here we go. Now this. Now we're getting some exciting news. This I'll let is you take exciting. This. Here's, yeah. here's fun. All right. So uh, for those of you that are into video gaming, uh, there's a lot of buzz. And I, I thought it's coming within the next day or so. But basically, Rockstar Games, who creates Grand Theft Auto, announced that the next game will have a trailer release. I think this upcoming week probably within the next day or so. It is Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. Look at you. Spot on with the research. You're like the Rogan show. You're, pull that up, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> you got it right there. That's awesome. So a lot of people are really, really excited um, uh, about this reveal. Uh, there's been some buzz leaks around it about what they're doing. And I've sent you some of the coolest ones. 
mm-hmm. and there's things in it like they're talking about uh you age your character actually ages in game that was a big one uh they are trying to integrate ai into the npcs instead of just having scripted conversation i mean yeah. we've said that on the show many many times the minute they do that it's just going to make the game so much more playable i mean characters that remember what your choices are remember you um come up with their own problems have their own schedule in game so it's going to be interesting so and then i kind of wonder depending on like their engine and progress they've made how realistic is it going to look we already know the unreal engine 5 it just we saw that body cam footage game for example with the vr that i shared with you it's almost indiscernible from real video footage so very curious about this because the gta 5 some people modded it out and they added realistic graphics and it already looked like photorealism so i'm excited to find out about this i think it's a 2024 or sorry yes 2024 release is why they're starting to you know one i have to make a correction so i went the wrong way on our uh, global continent so it's 8 a.m uh not 10 a.m so i went the wrong way (laughs) Hey, you got the date right. That's all that matters. Yep. So 8 a.m. Uh, this Tuesday, December 5th. Yep. I'm looking at the YouTube page. There's an active live countdown. It's got uh, 42 cool. hours, 11 minutes, and 18 seconds and counting. That's really cool. So you can actually, like, people are really Yep, really and I can throw it in the chat for this. our viewers here. Let me throw it in there for you. Because, uh, like, <laughs> there's some people that are talking about how, like, uh, they're going to take step away from work. <laughs> just so that they can watch the actual uh the video yeah uh i'm sure it's only going to be a small trailer uh but yeah so they actually have a youtube page with an active uh countdown on it yeah, there it is look at that yep. <laughs> uh and uh, i've seen some com- comments kind of flooding in a little bit uh people are actively commenting oh people are so excited and i think this takes place in like a florida-esque type area so it almost will have mm-hmm. like some vice city vibes to it uh, That'll be good. There's rumors about uh, they actually have real life people. You know the radio stations in the cars. Yeah, they've actually yeah. got like full podcast in the cars that That's they've done. Amazing. I mentioned Joe Rogan a moment ago. There's rumors that he recorded podcasts, I've, or they took pre-recorded podcasts and put them on a station. I heard that too. Yeah, music uh, partnerships with like Snoop Dogg for music. I mean, it's just like, yeah, it's going to be. They're going to make a lot of money. <laughs> Well, and you look at the last one. I think it's been going on for 10 years. It's yeah. spanned over three generations of consoles. Oh, yeah. And talking about the big boys, you know, Sony, PlayStation, uh, mm-hmm. so, Nintendo, or Sony, yeah. and Xbox. That's what I meant. But, I know what yeah. you mean. Sony, Xbox, yeah, and, X, and uh, Nintendo. But yeah, they keep yep. repacking. It's very Skyrim-esque, right? It has a cult following. There's people who don't even play a lot of video games, but they only play GTA, mm-hmm. you know? So... 42 hours as of the recording of the show. We will definitely report on it, though. The countdown is on. <laughs> there you go. Final countdown. Speaking yeah. of GTA, this is kind of cool. Yeah, Not Rockstar sure you... is just kicking butt. Yeah, go ahead there. I mean, do you, first of all, have you ever even tried this? So Netflix has a video game element. I have where not played any games on there. I have. It actually works pretty well. So here's oh. the premise. Anyone who has a Netflix account can do this. Uh, now you have to have the Netflix app on like your smartphone or a tablet to do this. Okay. But, and I think you may even be able to do it through your browser or on um, any type of a device. But the idea behind it is there's a, there's a icon in there for games and they just like they stream a movie to you. They'll stream a game to you. Now the game that I played was uh, into the breach, which is a pixelated strategy game. It, it's not like a lot of frames for a second. I mean, it's, it's a newer style game, but it's not very taxing, but it worked perfectly. I played it on my phone and uh, it works absolutely great. Uh, they do. They can put a localized version of it on your phone. So I know I was in an area that did not have cell signal. and I was still able to play it. So apparently they have an agreement with take two and all the, th- the trilogy uh, for Grand Theft Auto which actually starts with number three, by the way, which is weird, I know. Uh, Three, Vice City, and then San Andreas is going to be available in December on the Netflix app. So that means if you never played these, you have Netflix and you're interested, you play it on your phone, you play on your tablet, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and I mean, uh, to say for some of those listeners, if you don't know what Grand Theft Auto is, it is 
not for children. I mean, not to be the bummer, but you (laughs) need to just like movies pre-screen your movies for kids. You need to pre-screen GTA for kids. Yeah. But the great thing about it is like, I'm just going to say, I absolutely love um, Vice City is one of my favorite because the music it's set in the eighties. You jump in a car and you have like Eddie money or, you know, Michael Jackson or Metallica, something like blaring guns and roses. It's just the soundtracks on a lot of these Mm. games. Now there's a lot of controversy because they had redone these games, uh, you know, better, better graphics, that kind of thing. But they took out a lot of the music because they don't own the licensing for them that they did at the time. The agreement had expired. So, uh, but the original ones, they're all great. And I think it was vice city was the one that really started the music trend. San Andreas has a lot of rap. Um, hip hop from nineties, some great stuff yeah. in it because it takes great place stuff, you know, yeah. uh, in California. So I'm excited about that. That's kind of cool. So rockstar getting out there. Absolutely. All right. The next one is an uh, interesting one. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I have mixed emotions. So Columbia, which is a clothing brand quite pricey at times known for a lot of their outer winter wear. Uh, they have a star Wars Hoth, if you're unfamiliar with that from the Empire Strikes Back, it's the uh, yep. the cold ice planet. Uh, Hoth, uh, basically wearable jackets, what looks like a weird jumpsuit and hoodie. Uh, and it's so funny. It says your yeah, Tauntaun will most. This, so. It says your Tauntaun will most definitely approve of this cold new weather gear lineup. Uh, and I saw Mark Hamill, the uh, the guy that plays Luke uh, Skywalker. He was signing a lot of these and giving them away on his Instagram. Dang, dude, the uh, snowsuit, which is the Skywalker pilot ski suit, $500? Yowzers. Yeah. It's that blazing bright orange. I definitely people see. And they got like cool little tags on it, like a R2-D2 schematic underneath the flap. I don't know. Cool. I get it. Um, but eh, I don't know. $350 for a Luke Skywalker jacket. Are you going to yeah, you going to go for I'm any a of fan, these? But I don't think so. And orange, I don't think brings out my eyes. No, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's cool, uh, but it's kind of gimmicky, yeah. too. I will say if you're a skier, my favorite thing oh, are the absolutely. goggles. The goggles are kind of cool. See, the, they look really the, cool. They have yeah. these uh, ski goggles you wear going down the, the slopes there. Three hundred dollars, though, for them. But they're kind of cool. Uh, and then like a, a hat that has a Skywalker ball cap. Uh, t-shirt ain't bad, but $55 for a t-shirt, 75 or $70 for a long sleeve shirt. It's a cool little graphic though. They have Luke in the snow with an AT Walker coming at him. And of course, no look is complete without a fanny pack. Absolutely not. A, f- a $50. Those are coming back, but I think they're not 50. being worn across the uh, waist. They're, they're uh, cross, cross body. body that's a big one. Yeah. yeah. But no fanny packs have been a thing for a little while now. They, yeah. They made a comeback, but you can get a $50 one. There you go. You know, I go to my old man phase, but, uh, you know, a lot of the youth are wearing those crossbody bags. Yeah. Back in my day. <laughs> right. We wore our fanny packs on our fannies. <laughs> well, our fanny packs were lime green and... <laughs> bright. With our windbreakers. So oh, yeah. <laughs> but we look good, uh, dang it. Uh, this next one I'm excited about. It's, so, it's uh, a trailer release for Furiosa. A Mad it Max too. It does yeah. look awesome. Now, hot take here. If you never saw Mad Max Fury Road, a lot of people didn't like it. Uh, they were like, oh, it's not much of a story. Honestly, I love Fury Road. I think it's a chef gift. I think it's like... I thought it was... Somatically yeah. beautiful. They used real Cirque du Soleil acrobats in it. I mean, George Miller is the guy that does these movies. He did all the original Mad Maxes like OG eighties. He's very much Mm -hmm. about practical effects. All the vehicles run, all the actors are doing real stunts. Yes. There's CG in it for like the weather, but he's all about not having much CG. He's old school. And I think it shows, uh, because these movies are just unbelievable. And of course the world of Mad Max, if you're unaware, uh, it's essentially post apocalyptic and, uh, it takes place in the desert and the big commodity is water i'm not ruining anything for you here by the way just simply because that's a fact <laughs> so yeah. are you excited about this what do you think of those first movies a lot of people didn't like them i love them i thought they were great you know we have the uh, mel gibson era of uh, mad max he did a really good job i think this uh modern day uh special effects modern day cinematography it looked great uh one of the funniest coolest things on there was the big guitar guy taking him into battle <laughs> Yes. That was amazing. Oh, you mean from Fury Road? 
Yes, Fury yeah. Road. Sorry. I yeah. love that. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, Conan O'Brien did a spoof of the guitar guy uh, for Comic Con. And nice. he, he dressed up as that. And then Annie Richter, his sideshow person, dressed up as Emojin Joe, the guy with the mask. And they're, that's their cosplay. And uh, Conan's on this vehicle, like shredding the flames are shooting out of the guitar. And they have like, they borrowed like the vehicles they use in the movie. And then they're stopped on the side of the road and looking at a map because they got lost. They're trying to get to San awesome. Diego to Comic Con. <laughs> it's, it's a funny skit. It's really, really good. So awesome. I love these movies. So yeah, a lot of people were know, mad about it. Oh, uh, real quick. Yep. I was just say a lot of people are also mad about uh, this is a prequel. So Shalice Theron, who was Furiosa in those uh, prior, the one before the Fury Road. Uh, it's not her because, well, you know, you took the words right out of my yeah. mouth. Uh, Sorry, didn't mean to steal that. <laughs> no, no, you're good. So Anna Taylor uh, Joy, uh, she's been in a lot of stuff. Uh, Chris Hemsworth. Uh, now, Charlize Theron is in the credits. Oh, so she uh, probably makes an appearance. So she may make an appearance. Tom Hardy, great. He was in uh, Fury Road. So. Maybe they'll uh, do something at the end where they'll pick up where they left off on that last one. Mm-hmm. I, don't know. I love these movies. I think they're wonderful. I really enjoy them. They're just, they're a hoot. So I'm excited. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Now this is kind of cool. Christmas theme here. Advent calendars. Yeah. I came across this and I thought this was kind of neat. So I just threw it in there. Uh, so advent calendars, if you're unaware, again, lived in a rock (laughs) underneath a rock or something like that. Uh, these are things that you open each day on the way to Christmas. These have become really popular and there's some really cool geeky ones, especially if you have kids, like there's a Lego star Wars one. So every day you get a Lego star Wars characters, bluey. If you have little kids, Mm -hmm. uh, Doug, did you look at any of these? Did you like any of them? I did. Um, the fallout one, obviously caught my eye. Oh, fallout. Oh yeah. Uh, (laughs) I believe you got me a Skyrim uh, advent calendar last year. Did a year ago. Or two last years year. ago. No, it was last yeah. year. I think. It oh, was it was like, amazing. It's all a blur. All the cool know. little stuff that came in it. Yeah. It's, it's really something cool. about uh, the little things of getting a little reward every day to Christmas. It's nice. Uh, we really got into these as a family. My wife has a, a cheese of the day because she loves cheese. Oh. And so <laughs> some of them aren't geeky. Some are just practical. We have ones for our cats. So there's oh, cat there treats you. or cat toys. Uh, my daughter has a Lego one, I believe, right now. So, yeah, there's some really cool now, ones out of here. Another shout out, and uh, this will make him happy. But our buddy Matt Uh-oh. has a pretty nice wife that gets him a beer a day advent calendar. No, oh, it's wow. little micro brews and IPAs okay. and stuff. Are they full size beers or are they little? Yeah, just one can. Oh, it's, but, but I it's mean, a full size can. Them and, yeah, everything. She does a great job. Yeah. Hmm. That's actually pretty cool. You could probably pretty much find an advent calendar for anything that you're interested oh, in anymore. Absolutely, yeah. These are hot right now. They really are. So yeah. I thought it was cool. I threw it in there just because if anybody's looking for any ideas, uh, a lot of these are on, most of these are on Amazon. So if you go out and check for them, you can find them. Very nice. All right. You want to take this next one? Yeah. Make sure I'm on the right page here. It's about All our right. subscription so, services. Uh, yep. I was on the wrong page. Apple and Paramount are discussing a streaming bundle to fight subscription fatigue. And, you know, I have subscription fatigue. You know, I have <laughs> Disney and Hulu, which they are joining together, thank God. I've got Netflix, HBO Max. I've got Paramount. I'm going to get Apple. Uh, Ap- Apple. <laughs> I'm going to get Apple in yeah. January because there's a series coming out yep. from uh, Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. Really got to check that out. So Apple and Param- Paramount now joining that seems like a great idea to me start bundling all the stuff together because my app screen is just loaded with stuff well, that and the cost they're starting to get oh, so yeah. much well they keep jacking the price up and a lot of people are starting to like say look this is starting to get to be as much as you know when we had satellite or cable before uh so yeah, yeah there's some good stuff you you get Apple, you're gonna really like it. There's good stuff on there, man. You gotta gotta check out mm-hmm. Tesla. Ted Lasso. It's got some great stuff oh, on yes. there. Oh, dude. Now I've had it before, and one of my favorite shows I'll look up kind of while we're talking here was about. Uh, oh, it's Severance. I remembered it. Oh my god! Have you that's... seen that? Oh, have I seen it? One of oh, my favorite shows. I love shows. that show. I love that show. Severance yeah. is incredible. Like, and it was great too because I absolutely fell in love with Ted Lasso. I didn't think I would, and I did, yeah. and then. Severance had came out when one of the seasons had stopped and both my wife and I were like, man, how are you going to top Ted Lasso? And we got into Severance and we're like, now it's different. Ted Lasso is a feel good comedy. Mm-hmm. Severance is serious, but it is such a mind bender. I cannot 
suggest that anybody check that show out enough. It is so, so good. If you love sci-fi, yes. oh my gosh, Severance. Apple really is. Well, done and what some surprised good me work. about Severance, you know, watching the credits was Ben Stiller is one of the directors. He is. He's one of the uh, directors and writers. Which, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, and it's a serious thing. So it's kind of you know, kind of like Jordan. Oh, Peele. it gets dark and yeah, deep, somebody. Yeah. Who were used to comedy doing some serious stuff, so it it's awesome. But I'm I'm glad that they're starting to at least if this bundling thing works and it actually uh, reduces some cost, that would be awesome for everybody. And hopefully other other you know streaming services will do it. Absolutely. All right, we're on our last one. Now this one surprised me. I did not expect this like at all. We talked about it maybe even the last episode that we had, but the trailer dropped. Four, Doug, say it. Fall out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amazon Prime. Little... Yep. Ah. There you go. Cheer. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Looking at the trailer, it looks amazing. You know, you pick up on several things right away. The fa- the fallout shelter, the classic vault boy suit. Um, I just get, noticed she has, uh, she, she has a pit boy in her arm. I didn't uh-huh. catch that the first few times I've watched this. Now, you I, see some ghouls. I believe you see. Uh, rad roaches. Yep. So we're kind of watching the video here for those uh, watching live. It's on YouTube. Uh, it's going to be on Prime Video. Yep. Which that's another awesome reason on Prime. Get yep. your packages fast. Get your good shows too. I am so excited about this. I, I, what I love is that it is so much like the game, and that's oh. the big problem. When you have a lot of these interpretations, they just they kind of go. Even Halo had it did pretty good. Halo, I, I would say, was one of the better ones. But even The Last of Us, they kept the the clickers look just like the game, but mm, it didn't have exactly. It didn't have that feel. quite feel. Yeah, this spot on between the yeah. Uh, right now we're looking at Brotherhood Brother and a uh, power armor suit. I <laughs> oh mean, my gosh, I can go so on and on. It's. A- I also love that they kept. So in the game, if you're unfamiliar with it, um, everybody wears. So the premise is it's post apocalyptic. Uh, it's like an alternate history in that if the 1950s technology of nuclear works just like become really popular well then of course it's a nuclear war all over the world ruins the world and it's about the aftermath a lot of people who had the means could go underground into these vaults and they wore these suits i love that the suits they're actually bright blue with yellow pin yep. striping you know stripes on them they kept that so that's good you know it just it looks it looks amazing yeah and, and do you know well, who did uh, do you know who did this this is uh, uh ron howard uh, no. Todd Howard is the guy that does the that is the video game uh, guy. He's the video game director. But no, for mm. the, the TV series, it's actually uh, Christopher Nolan's brother, oh. if I remember correctly. Yes, Jonathan Nolan. Now, Jonathan Nolan, he's known for Westworld on HBO. Yeah, and so yeah, so the guy that did The Dark Knight uh, in Inception. Uh, his brother is the one doing this. So, yeah, and Ron Howard. I don't know. I must have been watching too much Andy Griffith. So, yeah, <laughs> Apollo. Thir- he did Apollo thirteen. Maybe that's what yeah. you're thinking. Ron Howard did Apollo thirteen. <laughs> so, oh man, I'll get with it one day. <laughs> Doug's Doug's low on sleep. Everybody, it's not his fault. It's yeah, okay. you know. <laughs> so, but, but like any, I'll go on my soapbox here. Any video or any movie turned into a or. Adaptation. Yep, I do need some sleep. So any <laughs> video game turned into a movie, you know, you always have these diehard fans of, are they going to ruin it? Just like any book turned into a movie. So yeah. some books have been tons ruined. tons and tons of Fallout fans. I'm just hoping we have one of the best adaptations. So far, the trailer there. looks good. It's promising, right? I mean, it looks, yeah. it looks awesome. Uh, but you're right. Anytime they go to touch any of this, I'm like, eh, should you? Eh. Don't do it. <laughs> don't mess it up. Please don't mess it up. Yeah, this is looking absolutely. awesome. I think April is when this is going to drop, so I'm excited. I mean, looking at the screens, like I said, the Vertibirds, the uh, Power Armor, the Pip-Boy, everything looks amazing so far. Makes me want to go play Fallout, though, when I watch that. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead, and that does it for our news. Let's go ahead and get on to our next main topic as I get that set up, Doug. Uh why don't you go ahead and tee us up to what we're going to talk about? We're heading into Christmas, so All right. do you ever well, snuggle in tr- and watch certain movies? I do, and I'm going to try to get fancy with my camera here. Tell me if it goes a little Whoa. wonky. Uh, Whoa. I'm uh, setting the mood for those on video. Christmas wow. time. I got my little fireplace right here. You know, Look everything. You. Very nice. Very nice. 
change the backgrounds where it's all like decorated. See, AI is going to be able to do that for you in the future. You know. Oh, right? definitely. <laughs> uh, so this is about as fancy as I get here. Wow. You, but well, yeah, Christmas you, movies uh, hold a awesome. special place in my heart. Uh, after Thanksgiving dinner, after you know Black Friday shopping, uh, it's definitely put the Christmas tree up. Start watching those movies because there's a ton of them out there. So what we've done today is kind of picked our list, and I'm looking at it. We really don't have the same things, which is awesome. We only had one. uh, We only had one duplicate, and I threw it to mine mainly because your list was so much longer, and I needed an extra one. So I thought you wouldn't mind. I I wanted to stay at like four or five because I saw you had that, and I'm like, no, I got to put this in this list. You put some good ones that I hadn't thought of. Like normally when Doug and I do this, there's always a cross like the same. This time Mm -hmm. surprised me. I'm like, wow, out of this list, there's only one repeat that's pretty good which means well, there's probably think, a lot of good Christmas uh, movies yeah i think it's based on how you're raised like generationally and what your parents liked and what you liked you know i have a lot of movies i wasn't even a thought in my parents eye they're so old but i've also got some movies that these were the go-tos that we watched every single christmas eve christmas morning that's awesome and it's fun like leading up to christmas to watch these you know Turn your mind off. So I put yours first. So I'm going to have you walk through yours uh, first here. So really no particular order, but uh, the Polar Express. uh, I used to get this book read to me by my mother every Christmas time, every uh, like December. Great, Great, amazing book. The movie. And then the movie adaptation, you know, like I said, you kind of worry that they're going to mess up the adaptation, but they did amazing. Tom Hanks uh, plays multiple characters in it. Uh, the uh, sights and sounds and all the hilariousness. Uh, it's a really great movie. Yep. And a fun fact about this, our friend Joe uh, has taken his family on, and it's it's not just one part of the country. Multiple parts of the country have this, but I know around the St. Louis, Missouri area, there is a theme <laughs> polar express. Out of Union Station, yep. That's right. That you can like take your kids on. They do hot chocolate and all that. Really cool. That's kind of neat. What a great experience. Yeah. Yeah. So he was the one that told me about it because uh, we had gone to like train rides before with him and his wife to do like uh, dinner train and that sort of thing. And then he's like, hey, did you know you had this? He was the one that mentioned it to us. I haven't done it myself, but I've known that they've done it. So it's it's pretty cool. It's a great movie. Great movie. Yep. All right. You ready for your next one? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do this. So the next one, <sighs> we so watch good. this every single Christmas Eve. This is And uh, my parents would be upset if I didn't mention it, but uh, <laughs> Muffet's Christmas Carol. I can't tell you, I've looked and I couldn't find the exact number, but how many times the Christmas Carol, you know, the Charles Dickens story has been done, Tons. redone, but this is by far one of the best and hilarious uh, uh, compilations or redos of it. And I have some in my list that are Christmas Carol, as you're right, it's like classic, it keeps getting redone, but I did not have the Muppet one on, that's great. It's my opinion, one, if not the best Muppet movie. Just oh, gonna yeah. say that, yeah. So, so to really throw good. it out there, you know, Christmas Carol was written by Charles Dickens in 1843, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's still going. That's how it's such an amazing story he wrote back then. Yep. And then have it adapted by Jim Henson Studios with the Muppets. It's just, oh, it's awesome. Yeah. And it's got Michael Caine in it. He's he's great. Oh, actor. he does a great job as Scrooge. Yep. Oh yeah, he's amazing. Which I'm sure he probably played it on Broadway or not, if not Broadway, on stage because he's a traditional mm-hmm. stage actor so he's probably, he's well versed he did it. a very good job all right your next one this next one, one home alone i mean i keep uh with Dude. the hits here yeah such a great movie yeah and it's uh, so good. one odd fact and i talked to my wife about this it does the mac and cheese look amazing <laughs> <laughs> you know we have a, a buddy here that has a studio in columbia that he makes commercials and movies and stuff his key is lighting i would love to talk to him about the lighting of the mac and cheese, <laughs> mac dumb and that cheese. <laughs> of all the things you could talk to him about on right. film and movies and how they get made you want to ask how do they do it the looked mac like and... it was glowing and how then he got interrupted so i'm like <laughs> he, macaulay culkin is just trying to sit down for a nice craft <laughs> macaroni and cheese dinner oh my god that he made all by himself and he didn't burn the house down anyway so back to home alone <laughs> Yeah, great this movie, movie would not work today, though, because all the kids have cell phones. They would just text their mom, hey, you left me at home. Now, it's funny you say that, and I think you've seen it, too, but Macaulay Culkin did an ad with Google. He, he did. And Google Home and yeah. Google he's Nest. Old, he's older in it, yeah. Yeah. 
It's really good. And it basically, he locks the doors from his phone, I think, and sets the alarm. And he moves the cutout basketball and baseball <laughs> characters around his living room. <laughs> and then he texts his mother. And his mom's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm coming back to you. So. <laughs> yeah. He just got a star on the Hollywood uh, Walk of Fame literally this past week. He did. That was week. awesome. Yeah. And what was cool uh, is that the lady that played his mom in Home Alone was there to support him. And so. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Good pick. I forgot about Home Alone. Man, look at you. All right, next so one. I, yes. Next one is the Santa Claus. And I like to say the Santa Claus series. I think How many about of them four there? of them. Four? I think four. And then they just came out with a series. I was going to say, isn't there another Netflix. one? Netflix. Yeah. Let me. And is it Tim Hold Allen? I'm doing some research in the background. No, you're fine. I'm trying to remember if uh, Tim Allen is doing the late, the the latest series as well. Hmm. So I don't believe he is here. I've got it pulled up. Um, yeah, he is actually, sorry. So it's on oh, Disney. Cool. It starts, uh, started November 8th. It's called the Santa Clauses. Oh, but it's, and a it's a continuation show. of the movie series, but it's a show. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Very cool. I know I saw an like ad for that. They have 12 episodes out right now. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. They, these are all really, really good. Tim Allen, especially in his heyday. Awesome. Very, very funny. So these are good. All right. Classic. It's not a Christmas without a Charlie Brown Christmas. You know, growing up, uh, a shocker to some of our younger generation, I had three channels growing up. Eight, 13, 17, and then, well, four maybe. Channel 25, kind of sketchy. Yeah. So that puts me in a <laughs> geographical the God channel. location there. But yeah. It was the religious channel. So... Every uh, Christmas, every Thanksgiving, the specials come on, you know, uh, a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, Charlie Brown Christmas. The music in this is what I love. And then just kind of the wholesome theme. Yeah. We have a friend, uh, a friend of our mutual friend named Alex who can play the piano like nobody's business. Every oh, single Christmas, I would ask him to play the, sh- the uh, you know, the songs from this on the piano because they're so good. So, yep. Classic. Dude, you're swinging for the fences today. I will say I am. that. I'm hitting all the, hi- the hits yep. here. So, uh, Now, shout out to my sister. We're doing shout outs today. So yeah, shout sh- out to my sister. She loves this movie. I do too. It just cracks her up every time we it's watch it together. Uh, she's coming back, hopefully, to visit uh, next couple months. We'll awesome. watch it again. Yep. Yeah, this Elf one never gets old. The movie I'm, yeah. yeah. So the movie I'm talking about is Elf. You know, sorry, I'm forgetting my uh, audio-only listeners here. Elf with uh, Will Ferrell, James Caan. I mean, James Caan, this like tough gangster action star, is now the father of a strange middle-aged elf coming <laughs> from North Pole. <laughs> oh my gosh, such a great movie! Call me Elf one more time, right? Or call me Dwarf. That's what it was. <laughs> Whichever it was. You know, my late night sh- shenanigans as a cop. I have to, no joke chase this raccoon away from this one building because it scares the custodians. <laughs> so I you always think of this to, movie. <laughs> yes. Oh, look at your little guy. <laughs> I want to think of Will Ferrell trying to hug a raccoon. <laughs> oh my gosh. Such and a I'm great thinking movie. thinking the custodians just need to hug the raccoon. What's really cool about this movie is if you ever get a chance, I am huge into like how things are made, especially film. They chose, especially for the first half of the film when he's in the North Pole, Spoiler alert. Uh, it shouldn't be a spoiler alert. He, he's, he was raised by Santa. Uh, but they chose to film it all with perspective shots, meaning that's an old school filming technique where they do placement of actors in the background and him in the foreground. So when he's sitting in the classroom uh, and he looks like he's bigger than all the other kids, he's actually on a platform closer to the camera lens while everybody else is in the background. But it makes him look huge. They did that with all of the th- all of the things, you know, and it's so cool how they shot those scenes. So it's an awesome movie. It, it never gets old. I'm glad you put this on there. Yeah, I think one of the funniest things, I believe his father was played by Ed Asner. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he sits on Ed Asner's lap and he looks huge. Yeah. He looks ginormous. They did that all with perspective shots. No, his father's not yep. Ed Asner. Ed Asner was was in the movie. Ed Asner was Santa Claus. Bob Newhart. Oh. Oh, okay. his dad. Yep. Bob Newhart. Yep. yep. Dang it. Absolutely great. Doug you had the right more sleep. <laughs> no, no, you but you had the right actor. Yeah. All right. Next up. Next up, no, Grinch stole Christmas. Now the question should be which Grinch do I like? I prefer, I believe, the original 
cartoon and i have a little note here uh 1966 the og that's right i agree with you jim carrey's amazing like no oh i use that poster just because that's what popped up and then uh benedict cumberbatch if i'm saying his name right Mm -hmm. uh he also played the grinch kind of a more cartoony pixar edition have you seen that one i don't think i've seen that one that's cool i'll check that one out yeah so uh let me see which when did it come out it's important to know i just was reading that jim carrey's coming back for another grinch He's doing it again. Oh, yeah, they're doing amazing. a second a continuation of it. So, and nothing so, against Jim Carrey; he's amazing. I just want to be. Oh, clear about yeah, that. it's just yeah. I like the original cartoon one too. So, The Grinch, just The Grinch, is with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. It came out in 2018. Okay, cool. Let's check that out. He's got a great. So, I'd definitely tell you to check that out. Oh yeah, cool. That's that's good. Good honorable mention there. All right, you going so, classic? Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, now I have to go back to. The old one or the new one. And I have to go to the 1994 with uh, Mara Wilson. Most yep. people know her by playing Matilda. Mm-hmm. And then Rich- Richard Attenborough, most know him from Jurassic Park. Yeah. Yep. He played uh, the doctor. With the And Amber. then you got hits like Dylan McDermott um, and James Remar. He is in a bunch of kind of 90s action films. Mm-hmm. So really good movie. Yep. And I don't. And I just grabbed the poster for the old one for those that are not that are just listening. I honestly, I don't think I've seen the '94 edition. So, oh yeah, it's a great one. I'll yep. have to check that one out. I kind of forgot. It's they... a modern spin on it. Uh, some popular actors you may know. Cool. Now this one is called, and I'm gonna let you explain it. I have no clue what this is. You're gonna have to explain this to me. It was 1984. Yeah. I will say that it's really old. The night they saved Christmas. Now, forgive me. No, the the poster is German. Uh, that's just the one I got. This is not a German movie, right? No, it's not. Okay. I just happened to grab that. So what is this, Doug? I'm glad you asked me that way because, um, I found this, you know, back in my days of three or four channels on TV, this came on somehow I fell in love with it. Uh, my wife says, this is the worst (laughs) movie I've ever seen. Never heard of it. And my mother says, you know, it wasn't that good. I don't know why you like this movie. I never heard of it. So uh, there must be some fond memory. So uh, an oil company is exploring uh, two Arctic sites up in the North Pole. They need to start blasting to uh, grab the oil. Uh, And then they start rocking Santa Claus's village. Well... The, the mission is for these children to stop the oil company from blasting and to save Santa Claus's village. Okay, so the night they saved Christmas. Got it. Yeah. I have never heard of this, man. I bet the trailer is cringy. I have to check that out. It's uh, real cringy. <laughs> so I honestly don't know why I like it, but it, there's something there. It's just like, wow, cool. Okay. I'll have to check it out. If not, just to see. All right, it's my turn. Now, I will say I did awesome. go in an order. I had a theory to my madness. I did go into oh, order. Okay. I started with like my absolute favorite. Top of the list. I, I thought about this long and hard. Four Christmases with oh, Vince absolutely. Vaughn yeah. and Reese Witherspoon. I love this movie. I love the premise. I think it's hilarious. I love the pacing of it. Uh, it's up there for me. So this one is probably the, the top. We watch it every year. And there's one liners in it that always cracked me up. So, um, the idea behind it is that, uh, two people that don't want to spend Christmas with their families, they're a couple and they don't have kids. And then they end up, uh, <laughs> getting messed up to where they have to go see their families because their flight to go to the tropics, uh, doesn't go out and then hilarity ensues, but it's really, really good as they visit all of their different families that it's a blended family and both sets of parents, uh, have been divorced and it's, it's absolutely a funny movie. You got to see it. So have you seen this one? I have. It's really good. Yeah. It's it's one of my all-time favorites. It always makes me laugh. So it kind of reminds me of an honorable mention to Christmas with the Cranks. That's a that one's similar to this, but a different yeah. story. Yeah, that's a they great movie. I didn't put that one. Kind of want to skip Christmas and go on a vacation. Yeah, it's a similar premise. There's plays out a little bit differently, but yeah, similar premise and I, I think it's really good. Good good call out. Now this yeah. is the one that we had this is the only one Doug and I duplicated and it is National mm-hmm. Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Uh, I Great, almost maybe. put this as number one. I, I'll, I'm going to dare say it may be tied with four Christmases for me. Yeah. So, but I watch it every year. What about you? Every year, you know, uh, there's so many one-liners. 
uh, that you can just repeat the whole movie. Okay. Our local theater does retro nights. I know last year, a couple years ago, they would play Christmas Vacation on mm-hmm. the big screen. That's cool. And I never got to experience that. It came out in 89. I was, what, three years old or something? I don't know. I was nine. But going back to the movies, getting soda popcorn and enjoying it on the big screen is yeah. such a great experience. There are certain scenes from this movie that just always get me today. Uh, the the two top two is when the ant wraps the cat in in the Christmas yes. present shaking and then when the oh, cat man. chews on my wife hates this because she loves cats but it always makes yeah. me laugh when the cat chews on the Christmas light and fries it and then Uncle yeah. Eddie goes if that kitty cat had nine lives and that pussy cat had nine lives he just wasted all of them oh man such a one liner movie yeah <laughs> Uh, one of the funniest parts for me is he puts that non-industrial cooking spray on his uh, for the sled. metal uh, sled, and I mean he goes oh, ninety to nothing like a like a SpaceX rocket there. Just, just so many whoop. moments in this. It's like one bit after the next. It's what I oh, love about my gosh. it. Yeah, yeah. Just I love this movie. So yeah, this one's up there for me for sure. But this was the only one Doug and I had duplicated because you got to have it on there. So. I, I had to put that on there. Oh know. yeah, yeah. When I saw that, I was. Like, uh, now, I would say this. Uh, the next one for me is Old School. It's a Wonderful Life. I never really liked this film much, to be honest with you, except over Thanksgiving, just past Thanksgiving, we happened to watch it at my in-laws. It's happening on, and I'll be honest with you, I gave it another chance. Maybe it's because I'm older yeah. now, and maybe I kind of get some of how deep it is. The movie actually holds up pretty well. And so yeah. I decided to throw it on there. It's really good. Have you ever seen this one? I have, you know, and for those uh, listening, in 1946, such a great classic that's still prevalent today. Yeah, it holds up. It's got some sad themes on it, but uh, it builds you up. You kind of, it's a great like roller coaster of emotions. It breaks you down. You feel bad, and then it at the end, boom, everything's going to work out just yep. fine. Remind you about what's important. That's the ultimate thing. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, it's yeah. good. It's good. It resonated with me, so I gave it a chance, yep. and uh, I'm glad I did because uh, I, I did. now I'm going to get really weird on you. Okay, yep. Doug okay. was swinging for the fences. I have to just put in there what I consider to be Christmas movies that I would love to watch at Christmas time. Die oh, yeah. Hard, right? This is the big argument. Is it a Christmas movie or is it not? When I was a kid, I was huge into action movies. While we also only had three channels growing up because we were out in the country. There was no cable out there like you. Uh, I was lucky enough to when my grandparents had a satellite dish, like the big ones, you know, that you had to rotate. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, yeah. my grandfather would record movies for us my brother and i would send a list from like the guide thing of what we wanted and he would send us these vhs tapes and mine were always full i was obsessed with action movies whether it was arnold schwarzenegger you know any of them Die Hard was one of them and so to me as a kid i honestly always assumed this was like a christmas movie and then it's so funny that as we've gotten older it's kind of an internet joke that is Die Hard a christmas movie and people argue about yeah. it so it does take place at Christmas time, has Christmas themes. There's all throughout it. It's at a Christmas party at a corporate building, but it's an action movie. Doug, mm-hmm. settle the debate. Is this a Christmas movie? I think it is. I believe it is too, but to uh, not hurt your feelings, Bruce Willis came out officially said it isn't. and I said know. it is not a I Christmas know. movie. I don't agree with Bruce. But to me, you're in a Christmas setting. Uh, he wears Christmas clothing. He ties people up in ribbons and bows. Look, he gives presents of machine guns. He kills one terrorist and sends him down the elevator wearing a Santa Claus hat. And I Absolutely. think it said like, ho, 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 or something like that. I, like, he, ho, 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 now I have a machine gun. Come on. I mean, yeah. that's... No, granted, now, if you give me a second to pause here. Oh, go ahead. I'm just going to say this. If you define a Christmas movie as the content is strictly about Christmas, yes, okay. I get it. That's a Christmas movie. But well, if it takes place during Christmas time and it has Christmas elements, I think it should count. Well, I I know it's a Christmas movie because I have the book. <laughs> That's so awesome. Where'd you get that? He's holding up a book. Amazon. It, looks, it looks like a kid's picture book for those that are on audio. It, it is uh, uh, The Night hard. Before Christmas, but Die Hard. <laughs> and uh, I'll just read the first line here. We won't go too far. Twas the night before Christmas, and up in the tower, everyone was partying except one wallflower. And it's got uh, Bruce Willis himself there. That's awesome. Kind of fighting my screen in the back. Yeah, I see that. that so yeah, definitely a Christmas movie, because I've got the book to prove well, That settles it. it. There you go. That settles it. Yeah. I love it. Well, my next one is in the same vein. Lethal Weapon, the first one. Oh, classic. Come on. Like, 
when his family gets kidnapped, like if there's a Christmas tree and like, I think they even, I don't know, man. It's like the whole thing is got Christmas all around it. Cause that's when it takes place. Now it's in LA. So there's no like snow or anything, but mm-hmm. it's, it's during Christmas time. So I think this one counts. Yeah. Mel Gibson, uh, Danny Glover. Yep. Great. Great movie. But I'm an action movie junkie, so that's probably why. Oh, yeah. Going back to what you said about Charles Dickens' uh, Christmas Carol, all the retellings. There's yeah. been some great ones. This is probably my favorite. It is Scrooged with Bill Murray in it. Uh, now, what's funny was I saw this as a kid, and I saw it later as an adult. And it's kind of got inappropriate moments in it that I didn't catch when oh, I was a kid. Yeah. But it's a great movie. It's a retelling of it. It's basically the same thing as Christmas Carol, but modern for the 1980s maybe 90s i have to look up when that is so did you ever watch this one i did it's great you know the first uh memories i have are so it's about a tv producer mm-hmm. and the first kind of memories i remember they're showing a commercial for like this christmas rambo movie <laughs> that's right I and uh <laughs> rambo co- or this rambo like guy comes to save santa claus from all these terrorists shooting up his little workshop <laughs> oh i've got a movie thought, i got a movie that's what like kind that. of movie is this <laughs> oh you're about to find out oh <laughs> so, uh, that's awesome yeah and this, then the one-liners on this too i mean bill yep as they say in zombie land bill freaking murray, <laughs> murray you know yeah. like he's, yeah. he's he's a classic so it's a great movie oh, yeah. same movie technically now this is newer spirited now it's on apple tv uh, mm-hmm. It has Will Ferrell, Ryan Reynolds. Essentially, I have it's not a, seen that, yet. dude. It's so good. I kind of yeah. watched it going because eh, there's musical numbers in it and stuff. They both sing. I will tell you, it is really, really enjoyable. I walked away from it going, okay, I didn't think this is gonna be that good. I really enjoyed it, so it's worth seeing. It's essentially a Christmas Carol, but a new Ooh. modern yeah. take on it, but with music. Definitely do yourself a favor. Check it out. It's good. The funniest part in this movie is got to be the fairy or the ghost of Christmas past. I think she is. Mm -hmm. But when she hits him with a toaster. Yes. That's so good. Funny. It has really good moments in it. So it's definitely worth checking out. It's Oh, what is this, Frank? Oh, it looks like a toaster. And then wham, (laughs) hits him with a toaster right now. Yeah. It's it's some good stuff. So if you ever get your Apple TV back, you need to check it out. So. Oh, it's coming back, yeah. Now, I'm going to, full disclosure, my next one I haven't seen. I'm going to watch it this season. It's new. It literally just hit streaming. It was in the theater for actually a little bit. Uh, But it's called Violent Night. Has David, I'm sorry if I'm saying his name, Harborer. I I don't know if I'm saying that right. Yep. But he's from Stranger Things. He plays Hopper, the cop in Stranger Things. Uh, He is basically Santa, and a family gets held by terrorists, uh, you know, captive, and uh, mm-hmm. Santa's just doing his job delivering presents, and he basically accidentally walks in on this terrorist family, uh, yeah. you know, keeping them kidnapped. And well, Santa decides to just go violent on them, and it looks awesome. Definitely rated R. It's an action movie, of course. So, absolutely. Have you seen this? So, not, yeah, I have. Is yeah, it good? It's great. Oh, oh okay. yeah. It's okay. very, very violent. It's so, supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, that's but why Santa Claus, it. I'll just say, uh, my. Excuse my language is a little badass. I mean, <laughs> and the I don't want to give this away to you, but Santa has a backstory. Oh, cool. All right. Good. And it goes into Santa's backstory of how he became Santa Claus. Okay. A really cool concept. All right. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to check it out. I had to put yeah. it on there because it's one I'm excited to, to watch. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. In that same, this next one I watched last year, and it's yeah. kind of a similar premise, but different. It's called Fat Man. It has Mel Gibson in it. Mel Gibson plays Santa Claus. It has Walter Goggins in it. By the way, love Walter Goggins. And just for a mention, when we were playing the Fallout trailer at the earlier in the Nerd News, there's a guy with no nose. He's a, what's known as a ghoul. He's played by Walter Goggins. He's also yeah. in uh, Righteous Gemstones, which is a, a comedy. Um, and uh, he plays a guy named Uncle Baby Billy. <laughs> this guy's just awesome. Well, he plays an oh, assassin yeah. who's basically... This uh, this assassin never got what he wanted for Christmas, and he blames Santa. So he decides to he's going to kill Santa Claus. Well, Santa mm-hmm. Claus is also a badass himself, and it, they basically are going after each other. And it's an action. It's so good. It's also one of these movies I sat on to watch. I'm going, I don't know. And then I watched. I'm like, you know, that was really good. Now I yeah. will say it's kind of indie film, so it ends kind of abruptly. You know, not a normal satisfying indie, but I really enjoyed it. It's a great movie. 
Have you seen this one? I have. Yep. Uh, really good. Uh, nice, uh, different perspective completely from any other Christmas movie almost. So. Yeah. Yeah. But it's good. Definitely yeah. good. And this is my last one. Jingle all the way with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, I'm going to admit, this is not my favorite of the Schwarzenegger movies by any means. But I know a lot of people love it. And it's got what I loved about it was the premise of two people's two dads trying to get this really hard to get toy for their kid, which is really kind of a thing. And it goes over the top, of course. And I just I love the premise of this movie. And it's got Sinbad in it, who's hilarious comedian. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's just it's really it's a good movie. I, I really enjoyed it. Not my favorite, but I think it needed to be on here because it has a, such a great premise. What are your thoughts oh, on absolutely. this? Uh, it's great. You know, the, the turbo man, as they mm-hmm. call it, this power action figure they're trying to get. And then the cast is great. Like you said, Schwarzenegger, Sinbad, and then Phil Hartman, the late, great Phil Hartman, Rita yeah. Wilson, which I believe is, uh, Tom, is that Tom Hanks? Tom wife? Hanks's wife. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Make sure I'm saying it right. Uh, Jim Belushi, Paul Wright, uh, just keeps going on and on, but such a great movie too. It is. It's really good. So, so yeah, I, that does it for my list. Uh, you know, yeah. our hope in this is that by just kind of bringing some of these up heading into the holidays, that if you're wanting to cozy in now that the weather's getting colder leading up to Christmas, if you want some good ideas, maybe revisit some old classics. Uh, but uh, those are the official wired nerdy suggestions on there. And I know we're going to get messages. There's some, we forgot. We always do. Oh yeah, things, right? absolutely. I mean, so yeah, I know, I know we're going to get some, some honorable mentions in there for that. We apologize, but, uh, we, we, it was a good time putting the list together. I really like doing that. So, uh, but I think that rounds it out for this episode. Number 41, uh, Doug, bring us home, my friend. Yeah, uh, you know, it's uh, that time of year we get closer together to family. Uh, we appreciate you all listening. We appreciate you pre- appreciate you all watching. I'm going to get some more sleep on that note. But, uh, <laughs> you know, check out our merch store. we got lots of cool things. Christmas is right around the corner. I believe the shipping, it'll still make it to your house. Uh, yep. Get under that tree. It should. Uh, it supports us, helps us continue to bring you the great content that uh, we're providing. Yep. And we appreciate all the comments, concerns, questions, suggestions. So keep it up. Yeah. It's really been awesome. Thank you, everyone. Uh, hope your uh, December has started well here in 2023 at the time of this recording. Uh, and we will talk to everyone next week. And you take care of yourselves. Yep. Bye. See ya.